and welcome again to HRN, where we're going to be doing, where we're, I'm sorry, where we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing some exercise today. But specifically, we're, uh, we're going to be doing some snake breathing in the very beginning. Um, if you have never heard of that, it's, a, it's kind of like a yoga type of breathing exercise that you can do at the comfort of your own home, of course. Um, today's topic is we're going to, uh, just like we, uh, uh, we asked everybody, everybody wanted to talk about Manu lungs and how to work Manu lungs out. So that's going to be our major topic, our our basic discipline uh, will be on mindyourlungs.com. Uh, so if you haven't registered, don't worry about it. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So, oh, there was a news topic uh, today that was it was uh, it was going over a lot of speculation. It was off of a lot of speculation. Uh, one, according to the news broadcast, uh, uh, people are seeing uh, an abundance of pollen, like big blankets of pollen on their car or on their vehicles and, and other surfaces outside. Uh, we've seen, we have seen such a tremendous amount of pollen. Uh, of course, uh, like it's, it's, we haven't seen this much for, uh, I don't remember uh, any time in my life, and I'm, I'm 45 years old, I, haven't, I don't remember any time I've seen this much pollen before. So there was a, um, a news broadcast about, uh, about that topic, about the overabundance of pollen exposure and, and how much pollen is coming out there. So they are, they're thinking, the scientists are thinking, the reason why there's so much buildup on pollen uh, lately is because of there's not enough pollination from bees to pull out pollen from one plant to another, you know, asexual. They um, they transfer the pollen to another plant, and that's how they procreate. Because they're they're thinking that there's not enough pollination, the trees or the plants rather I shouldn't say just the trees, but the plants are trying to find a way. In a, in a sense, this is mind you, this is speculation. They're trying. They're thinking that uh, the plants are producing more pollen to reassure their survival. So they're pulling out their throwing out so much pollen out there and the reason why we see so much pollen on like a blanket on your vehicles and things like that is because of the plants producing way over the amount that we usually would see just to reassure their survival just so they can procreate and and uh you know more plants grow so anyways um i thought that was quite interesting <laughs> Uh, I mean, without a doubt, that's very, very interesting. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense, uh, but um, again, it's it's speculation. So let's go ahead and go over how to do the snake breathing. I had uh, my respiratory therapist, um, uh, uh, Melanie, was actually saying, you got to teach me the snake breathing, and because she's never heard of it. And uh, there's a lot of breathing exercises. We have the call smalls. We have the uh, blood pressure breathing exercises, um, the Wim Hof breathing, uh, snake breathing, yoga breathing, uh, re reduction of stress types of breathing, towel respiratory muscle training, water respiratory muscle training, vagus nerve stimulation. There's, did you know there's an actual vagus, term, vagus nerve, that's 10th cranial nerve, um, stimulation, you know, uh, in regards to breathing. So these breathing exercises, like the vagus nerve stimulation breathing, will actually stimulate your vagus nerve. You know, uh, we're talking about the, uh, not just the parasympathetic nervous system, but, uh, okay. So, a lot of this stuff can sound a little jargon, but I, I have to be as honest as possible with it, you know, but it, it sometimes sounds a little, little uh, too much medical lingo. Anyways, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit up nice and straight first. Now, how I breathe with snake breathing, you're gonna look like a snake, okay? So what I do is I breathe in and I'm gonna focus my attention on my right lung first. And when I do that, I'm gonna to try to just pretend that in your mind that you're, when you inhale, you're gonna inflate the right lung. And then when you exhale out and when you go back to inhale, you're gonna inflate the left lung. So this is how it looks like. First, we sit up nice and straight. I'm gonna take this off here. First, we sit up nice and straight, and as I breathe in, 
I'm lifting my right shoulder up, trying to transfer all that air into the right lung, just concentrating it uh, on that right side. So then I exhale, inhale on the left side, right side, left side. As you see, as I tilt over, I'm tilting over, lifting my left shoulder as I breathe in to kind of help support the air and the air coming into my left side. At least that's where I'm, my concentration's at. And as you do that, you almost look like a snake. So snake breathing is a way for, so it's mostly used in yoga, uh, snake breathing. It, and there's probably other names for it too, but the, the one that, um, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the most popular name is snake, snake breathing. I'm pretty sure there's other types of names for these, but we're, we're going to go with snake breathing because that's, that's what it said. <laughs> okay, so in snake breathing, I inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, in. Now we're going to slow our breathing down just a little bit. So on your inhale, try to make it last for four seconds. You ready? Okay, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, inhale. Remember, concentrate on the right side now. Inhale, one, one thousand, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, and you remember when you're inhaling, after the four seconds, you're going to inflate the other side. You do this for about 10 minutes, okay, you're doing this for about 10 minutes, and doing it every day, it's, it's just going to help with a lot of stress reduction. Uh, it also helps with the brain, mental acuity, things like that, because you're bringing in oxygen. Oxygen goes to the brain if it comes in more freely, and there's a lot more particles, you know, oxygen particles coming into your brain, then, you know, you might find that food will be tasting different, mental acuity is a lot better, memory enhancement. You're starting to remember things you probably forgot a long time ago, you know. So those types of changes can actually happen, and uh, those are pretty much like the same type of outcomes, but this one where you're concentrating on right and left side the most, formulating or looking like a snake, mimicking a snake. So Pamela okay. actually had a question about snake breathing. Can you use the Delta V while snake breathing? Of course. The, the only thing is, is that it's, you're not supposed to add resistance to it, but there's not going to be any harm to that. So if I added a Delta V to it, and let's say I have a setting at a five, put this in my mouth. All this is going to do is just strengthen that side up. You know, if I move it to the left, it's going to strengthen the left side up. So inhale. And what's my count? Four seconds. And I'm counting in my head, four seconds, four seconds, inhale, four seconds, exhale, then repeat to the other side, four seconds, inhale, four seconds, exhale. Okay. Try not to go fast with these because if you're trying to go fast, <sighs> might, uh, might, you know, you might get a little lightheaded and things like that. So, so just be cautious, you know, be careful. And of course, before starting any of the exercises or techniques, especially if you're not one of our patients, please consult with your own physician or clinician that oversees your health and well-being. Uh, before starting any of the exercises, as sometimes, you know, there are some complications involved. Complications can be from lightheadedness, and, and especially if somebody has vertigo, you know, issues or they have balance issues and they're feeling a little lightheaded than what they normally would feel, they might find themselves feeling a little bit of that, of that too much. Uh, in that case, just make sure that you uh, notify your clinician before starting any of the exercises, especially when we go over mind your lungs. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and we are going to go straight into the nitty gritty of things, which is the Manu lungs. Okay, so in Manu, oh, oh, uh, before we start, um, uh, we have to uh, talk about our sponsors. Sponsors uh, for today are Manu lungs, uh, Denali Health, uh, and, um, 
and um, Delta the v. Delta V. Now, we do have a new sponsor that's coming in. It's the uh, VPEP, Dr. Burton's VPEP. He's, uh, they're going to be showing some devices. Uh, we can probably do it virtually, but I'll be showing you the devices, how they work. Uh, these are, uh, the VPEPs are something that I, I'm not saying because, you know, that is going to, you know, he's, that company is going to be our sponsor. I'm not saying this just to, you know, uh, kind of advertise it in a sense, but we specifically use VPEPs in our pulmonary rehab program. Uh, only if it's allotted, only if it's necessary, if it's needed. So if somebody has a lot of congestion and they're having a hard time bringing out that congestion, a VPEP is a very unique device that it's a flutter. So it's an oscillation device. And what that means is that as I breathe in through the device, I fill up my lungs and as I exhale through it, okay, another substitute would be like an acapella, an aer uh, aerobica or aerobica. Uh, there are other one, air physios and things like that. But I... Like, I, I, I'm not dissing any of those others. It's just the VPEPs, you can take them apart, very easy to take apart. They're dishwasher safe, very easy to clean. And you can attach a uh, T piece to, for nebulization when you take your medication. So I breathe, in the medi I breathe in the medication through the nebulizer, and I'll show you all this. You breathe in the medication, and you exhale the congestion when it flutters. So when you breathe out through this device, the VPEP, uh, it vibrates your, because it's called an oscillation. So it vibrates your chest fields and helps mobilize that congestion. And then every 10 breaths you would cough. Uh, but there's a lot of things that you can attach to them to even make them even more helpful. Okay. And we'll go over that later on. So we're going to go ahead. Is there any questions about that, by the way? Uh, no, none, none right now. But uh, as just a reminder, please like and subscribe and uh, also uh, give us a follow on one of our social media platforms. Absolutely, find, absolutely. You can find those links in the description uh, of this live stream. Uh, so, yeah. Alex, the floor is yours. All right. Mighty Lungs is up behind you. Okay. Is everyone seeing this? They can. Okay. So on Mind You Lungs, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to sign in. If I haven't signed in or I haven't signed up, so let me show you how this works. For remember, pulmonary rehabilitation is a it's it's a program that works out your lungs and your whole body. It works on stress management, uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, dietary, all that. Okay, so if we just work out our legs and we're not working out our lungs, then it's kind of pointless for pulmonary rehab. That's why in pulmonary rehab, you need to focus on the breathing aspect of it. But this is a medical program. So what I mean by that, in a traditional facility, you're looking at an inpatient facility around 200 to $376, uh, which is roughly we see around fifteen dollars to $21,000 a month out, out, you know, um, out of pocket. Uh, unless the person's insurance covers it. So that's an inside facility. I'm not talking about outpatient. I'm talking about inpatient care. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm trying to relay is that, you know, um, we try to make this as affordable as possible. And the new website is a new website. So uh, it is very, very, very inexpensive, but very inexpensive, but it has been so successful with our patients. So let me show you here. I'm gonna scroll down. And do you see where it says level one pulmonary rehab? I can buy that whole level one, which is a week total of 40 lessons. And I can buy that, sure. Um, what I would do, now our patients would actually go all the way down. They would scroll all the way down till they see the HRN only patients, this one. And they would sign up for that. If somebody else that was not in our program, because of course we have medical records and things like that, um, if we find that somebody used this, they would actually kick them out and that person would not be allowed to go into Mind You Lungs um, ever again. It's just, uh, this is only for HRN patients. So if you're not an HRN patient, then you would just find the masterclass pass. You could do the core level pulmonary rehabilitation or the supplementary courses, but if you get the all ma the master uh, pass all courses and register, it is thirty nine ninety nine per month, 
and that's very inexpensive considering that it costs about uh it's it's just very extremely affordable of course for essentially the same thing in a yeah the same thing 300 right versus per day yeah that's 376 dollars per day versus this is per month so it's it's a it's a very very inexpensive program but it's a very useful program of course what's that 336 dollar difference like yeah it's just ridiculous so I would subscribe, there's that subscribe button. I would subscribe to the master class pass. And they're gonna ask for uh, you know, your uh, credit card number. It's a, it is a subscription, of course. You put your email, your first name, and the first, uh, the first payment is $9.99. And then after 30 days, then it'll start charging you. And it'll stay right there. To can- and if you have a coupon, you apply the coupon right here and press apply, okay? We, uh, we understand we, we try to make it free, but the, we have to pay these clinicians and we, uh, we have to pay the doctors and people that oversee the program. So um, it, it, unfortunately, it cannot be free because there's no, there's no major sponsors that will pay for that. It's just the, um, yeah, that's just the battle of the beast. But of course, it's not very expensive at all. So let me go back here and I'm just going to log in. So right here, we're signing. Okay. Now, just in case, yeah, just in case if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to cancel my account, you see where it says my account? I just click on that. Billing is on the left side right here. I just click on billing. And then I can just edit that and cancel it. Okay. So then there's no subscription anymore. That's how you would cancel it. It's very, very simple, very user friendly. Uh, of course, this is a little different from, uh, from uh, last week because the Mind Your Lungs have uh, been updated to be more user friendly. We're adding a lot of content. And I mean a lot of content. So I'm gonna go to all courses. I'm gonna resume bundle. Okay, now. So as I see right here, there is a lot of courses and things of that nature. Uh, the one thing I want to do is let me go to, and you see all the doctors, the equipment. Equipment necessary, most of the equipment that we would actually need would be a delta V, an incentive spirometer, and also a pulse oximeter. Those are pretty basic. You know, and weights, you can find weights. You can use free weights like uh, use soup cans. Uh, as a weight, just anything up to five pounds. Could also order uh, two of our water bottles. Yeah, you can order our water bottles, and they're five pounds each if you fill them all the way up. If you want half that weight, make them 2.5 pounds, then just fill them up, fill the water bottles halfway. Very simple. So let me go back to all courses really quick. As we just, I'm just showing you this, you know, showing you around here. Okay, so level one, you see where it says level one pulmonary rehab? Let's say I'm going to start with level one. Never start with anything besides, you have to go in order. So level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, all the way up. So I'm going to start with level one if this is my first time. I'm going to click on that. Of course, I've played this course many times, so I'm just going to say replay. And the beauty of this is that you can literally go to... Uh, you can redo this as many times as you need to. So if you felt like you want to do this again, then do it again on the same thing. So I'm going to go to day one here. And do you see on day one, I I have the introductory, which is a prerequisite, meaning you can't do anything else until you finish that introductory uh, course. Let's say I go through incentive spirometry overview, which is an educational course. So, So all I do is press play. I'm going to move it a little forward there. So it's all subtitled, of course. And if I want to know what the per, you know, what I'm saying here, I can on the video, not just me because that is me up there, you know, all the way up. That's the same handsome guy. <laughs> they just can't hear it because it's coming through my headphones right now. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, you know, I can just read this if I if I wanted to, if I wanted uh, to know what, you know, uh, I'm saying there. 
Um, and of course, the other thing is, is if I wanted this in Spanish, I click on Spanish and now it's in Spanish. If I want to click it on English, and we are going to have other, uh, other languages on there. Right now, it's English and Spanish. So all I do is follow along according to the, uh, to the coach. So after I finish this out, this is not the exercise. This is the education. If I was going to go to the exercise, when you complete this, and this is all the way full, once you complete it, Okay, you press, you see down here on the bottom of the screen where it says continue, you press continue and you move on to the next course, which is Borg scale. It is very important to do these in order. Don't be one of those people that they feel that, oh, let me just do respiratory muscle training because that's my problem is, is I have a breathing issue. You have to work on cardio relation. You have to do toleration to exercise. So like even if you fixed your lungs up to a good level and your lung functions are back up, you, you might still have that problem with being out of shape. Your legs might be weak. Your anxiety might still might be high, let's say. Okay, so you never want to just focus on breathing exercises. You want to do the breathing exercises in conjunction with the therapy. That's why this is in order. So you're going over Borg scale. What's the point of Borg scale? Well, that's to, to describe and tell you how out of breath you should feel, you know, like using a, a number scale, 10 being the worst, zero being the least, and you are supposed to rate yourself subjectively. <coughs> Excuse me. If I was going to do the exercise, respiratory muscle training exercise, just press play, and I will follow along. I'll grab my incentive spirometer, and right here I can enlarge this. So I can see this video a lot larger, you know. I'll enlarge this. And as I'm playing this out, let's say, let's move over to, this is going over a little bit more education on the respiratory, on the Delta V, basically. So if you want to know a lot about the Delta V and the education, Mind Your Lungs is a very good spot to go to, of course. So I'm going to minimize that. And let me go over. So remember, after you finished one video, just go down and where it says continue, you just press continue. And then you're moving into the actual exercise training part of it. So let me go up here really quick. So this is the exercise itself on the Delta V. Oops, I pressed continue and I didn't complete it yet. Let me go back to day one, respiratory muscle training. I forgot press play. Okay. So let's say I was going to grab my Delta V. We could do this together if you want to, everybody. If you, if you have your Delta V ready, go ahead and grab your Delta V. Let's set it to a five and we'll work this out according to the video. And I'll explain it because you probably can't hear the audio off the Manu lungs, but you can see it. So it's giving me 10 seconds to, pre to prepare myself. Please place the Delta V in your mouth on the, uh, on the inside of spirometer and we'll get started. All right, let's go ahead and exhale. So I'm breathing out. Lungs are shrinking. I'm breathing out, 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 out. And then I go back to breathing in. Keep inhaling, keep inhaling, keep inhaling. On the incentive spirometer, keep the flow meter in the proper parameter, then go back to exhale. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. And then go back to inhale. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, four, five. And then go straight to exhale. It's the numbers and the timing will change periodically. This is to bring in more air and start training out those lungs, the lung muscles, diaphragmatic and intercostal muscles more properly. So I would work this out. And as I finish this out, this finishes a whole 10 minutes of my respiratory muscle training. So when it comes to respiratory muscle training, how often do we do this? Six times a day, 10 minute sessions. So after you finish this, this is 10 minutes. So you just did one. 
you know, one of your six. So you have five more to go, right? All right, so let's say I finish this out. Watch what happens at the end. So we're exhaling, exhaling, exhaling. Go back to inhale. It's almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there. Congratulations, you did it. <laughs> so it's very fun and entertaining too. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Sorry, my mouse is acting up a little bit. There we go. All right. Now, if I was going to do some other exercise, let's say I move over to day, f well, let's see what's on day five. Hand bike, let's see, stretching, interactive uh, stretching, that's pretty good. Oh, down here, let me click on this one. Okay. So this is a follow-up, okay? Me and other, our other clinicians want to see how well you're doing. So at the end of the first week, you have an option to have a respiratory therapist like me. And, mo and mo a lot of times it is me doing the, uh, the, um, the follow-up. It can be Dr. Shaw, it can be, and, and mind you, if you don't want to talk to a respiratory therapist and you'd rather talk to a pulmonologist, you have that option. But basically, the purpose of this follow-up with a respiratory therapist is to assess your progress during week one. Pulmonary rehabilitation and answer any questions you may have about your performance and how to improve moving forward. This is an option. You don't pay extra for this. This is where you would use FaceTime or use Zoom, and I would see you, you would see me, and we will talk about what you want to get out of this, what, you, uh, you know, what you're doing currently, and I'll, you know, I will give you advice, or the clinicians will give you advice, uh, and also how to critique your therapy. Like, for instance, people have a hard time with incentive spirometry. So I would actually review it with them and go over incentive spirometry, and I would see if there's any problems I'm seeing by looking at you virtually. And then I can assess and help out with that. And this is a great option to have. And you have this option when you go into my new lungs. You have the option of actually talking to somebody like me, you know, if not me. And then you can talk about any situation. You can say, I'm on this medication, this medication. My doctor wants me to do this. I'm, uh, I have a hard time breathing. I have a hard time going upstairs. You know, anything you want. And then I will help you out with that. The session time, won't, it will only be for about 15 minutes, Okay. But just you write up any questions you may have. You write them down preemptively before you go on to Zoom to see somebody like me. You don't it's, just uh, leave them hanging. Yeah, exactly. It, it's a wonderful program. I mean, that's why you, there's a lot of people on Mind You Lungs. You have no idea. There, it's a global program. It's, it's a very, very good and successful program. So let me go over to day six. I want to see, find there's cooking with COPD. I don't want that one. See if I can, should not safety, best ways to take respiratory medicine. There's a lot of content here. I want to show you. While we're figuring that out, uh, I actually uh, have a question for you here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do we need to be in pulmonary rehab in order uh, to do the workouts with my new lungs? No, this is pulmonary rehab. No, I mean... So can anyone do the workouts, essentially? Absolutely. Yeah, you don't need a referral or anything. This is, you just get on it and you just start working out. You just, it's always a good idea to consult with your doctor that you, get, well, you want to do pulmonary rehabilitation. And this is a self-paced course. So you work on your own time. So if you work during the day and you can't do HRN therapy, you have an option of doing this. There's a lot of patients on my new lungs that are not in HRN. And they do incredibly well. But, you know, you just got to work the program out. So uh, we actually have a question from Glenda. Okay. Uh, she is asking, she hasn't been able to get into the pulmonologist yet because they're so booked up or so booked up in advance, the pulmonologist near her. So she was wondering if she should still 
she has COPD. Uh, just to keep, to keep in mind, she has early stage COPD. She was wondering if she should continue the exercises or wait to see the pulmonologist first. Well, I mean, it, the exercises you'll start out with are all very safe. You know, these are things that we make these, you know, like in HRN, it's a little different because HRN, we, it's, uh, the, the program is tailored to your age, your height, your weight, your disease, everything. Mind you lungs is very safe to do. And if you don't feel safe doing something, just wait. But doing the exercises won't hurt you. You're, you're breathing, using resistance breathing. Uh, breathing. I've never heard any doctor saying they should never do that, ever. You know, If you want to wait, you can, but why not start? So when you see your pulmonologist, you'll sound a lot better. You know, you won't be so, you know, there won't be so many, you know, breasts. I mean, depending on how long it, it will be until you see your doctor. But um, if you are starting the program, usually in the first two weeks, if you're doing the program, a, mind you, never, ever skip. Don't ever try to do a whole week in one day. It is absolutely the worst thing you could ever do. Okay. It's all in order. It's very hard to get confused with this. It's all in order. But if you had some issues or, you know, questions and things like that, you can easily just call us up and we'll help guide you. We have a lot of staff here that would love to help you out. You know, no big deal. But, uh, yeah, you can start. Like stretching, what's, what's wrong with stretching? What's wrong with breathing? What's wrong with learning how to cough? You, you, why would I have to wait for a doctor for that? If I don't cough up something and let's say it's becoming more, more uh, you know, it's getting worse, it might lead to a mucus plug, you know. The, these things are very, very helpful. So, um, Plus, Linda, there's, there are other things on my new lungs like uh, Yeah, the, the education, the cooking, everything. That will be really beneficial for you. So, so I'm, I'm going to bring up the stretching part of this. So I'm going to enlarge this out. I'm going to bring it out in the middle. Well, quarter, rather. Okay. So as I'm doing the stretching, there's a timer on, this, on the stretching, how long you hold that stretch for. A lot of these things you can do in your own seat. And when you're doing exercises, let's say you're doing other exercises, uh, you know, and let's say you don't feel comfortable doing them, then don't do them. If you don't feel comfortable doing things, then don't do them. But all this can be seated in a chair, not even have to be on the floor. Okay, you can do all this seating, sitting in a chair. So you don't have to be as aggressive or work out as fast as everyone else. You know, these are coaches. You just have to follow along and work out with them. A lot of times what I would do when I don't know something, I, I want to see it first. I want to see the routine first, and then I would participate afterwards just to become more familiar on what is expected of me. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So on stretching, you know, these are two coaches right here. This person right here, I know her very well. She's, uh, she's an Olympian bodybuilder. And uh, she won the, uh, the Olympian bronze. I know it's not gold, but it's a bronze. I mean, it, it, she can bench a Buick. Uh. I mean, seriously. You know, she's, she, uh, she's actually uh, um, a, I believe it's a commander uh, in the Air Force. And she flies helicopters and jets and everything. So, but yeah, she can, she's a very strong woman. <laughs> I would never mess with her. You know, a very strong woman. <laughs> so these are, what I'm trying to say is these are professional people. Okay. So you're working out with coaches that are professional. You're working out with clinicians like me that are professional. Working out with, you know, like if I was going to do dietary, let's say I was going to do dietary and I want to learn about the cardiac diet. Then I'll be with Nicole Platt, our registered dietitian. And this is just an education source. So, oops. And all I'm doing is just either reading it or, or listening to it. And I'll follow along, take some notes if I need to. And of course, you have mind you lungs for as long as you like. Now, remember, after the video has completed, you just press continue and it'll move on to the next one.
And if I need some notes, I can easily just do something as simple as this. If I want to take notes, I can click on this and highlight whatever I want to highlight, right click, press copy, and put it onto Word and print that out if I wanted to. There's a lot of ways you could do or you can just take notes or just read it off because it's yours. Or you can email it to yourself. No, or, yeah, or you can email it to yourself. So as I continue, now this is allowing me to continue because I already did these. So let's say I finish this out. It's lesson four, lesson five on congestion, board scale stretching, respiratory muscle training. You'll find respiratory muscle training and incentive spirometry usually every single day because that's what you should be doing. And you might see the video be the same one because the program works. So we just duplicate that just to make sure you're still doing respiratory muscle training and incentive spirometry every single day. There's no point of changing anything if, it's the, if that's what you're supposed to be doing, right? So say I press continue, sorry. It's a 10 minute workout there, lesson five, Zima. So I completed that. I get my certificate. I'll rate my course. Say so if I rate the course, you know, just type it in, give it a star, and, uh, and submit it. Oh, please fill out the field. Well, it's okay. I don't need to fill out the field here. Okay. So get my certificate. Congratulations. This certi certificate is awarded to Alex Grichuin, and you got one raffle buck. You keep the raffle bucks. Just keep the raffle buck. So you can download it or copy the link, and now you have it. You can so what are the raffle bucks? Um, so what we do with raffle bucks is um, it's almost like playing bingo in a sense. Uh, the more raffle bucks you have, uh, you get to win prizes and things like that, water bottles, pulse oximeters, uh, giveaways that we usually get from sponsors. And then we use that for the person's raffle buck. And um, if they have enough raffle bucks, usually like one or two, they can usually get a prize. One raffle buck is, I think, equal to a pen. But it all depends on what we're giving away that day. So there you go. You got an actual tangible goal as well. Yeah. Outside of, your, outside of just improving Get some health. free stuff while you're, you know, while you're doing the mind you lost. Get some stuff. I, I, I think it's wonderful. All right. So after I do that, then I'm, I can move on to the – did you have a question, John? Uh, I do, from Pamela. Oh, uh, please, actually. go ahead. Uh, she was just wondering how many – and you might not be able to answer this because we have so many. Um, but she was wondering how many videos are there uh, in the whole course. So I, uh, I'm not sure if she's asking throughout all of Mining Lungs or just in a single so, day. So we update the videos every month. Every month there's new content. It's hard to say how many videos altogether – but you're looking at a lot. <laughs> I mean, a lot of videos. Um, I, I don't know, a, a couple thousand, you know? Um, as we start vamping up and we start adding more and more, it just builds up more, you know? But uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of videos on My New Lungs. Uh, we're adding in walking with respiratory muscle training, the ALK 8 count RMT. Lower uh, blood pressure breathing, stress less types of breathing, box breathing, snake breathing, him hoff breathing, uh, respiratory muscle training and biking, vagus uh, nerve stimulation breathing, uh, water aerobics with respiratory muscle training, water aerobics without respiratory muscle training, towel RMT. Uh, those are the ones for this month that I'm looking at the board right Oof. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know. So th there, you, so there you go, Pamela. We we have a lot. There's a yeah, variety. Yeah, Pamela. There's it's uh, it, we have a ton. <laughs> uh, it's hard to get bored. So, um, oh, my mouse is not. There we go. One second here. Having a heart. Are you using the mouse right now, John? So after I finish level one, what do I go to next? Level two. Very simple. You work each level out. So I go, let's say, 
I go to my dashboard right here. This is your own dashboard. Okay, I can go to my dashboard. I can go to all courses. Anyone, you can do resume bundle. Okay. You have the general exercises, things like that, but I'm going to resume this course. This is level one. I need to move to level two. And then I can go to all courses or I can go to my dashboard, whatever I want to do. But let's say I go to all courses first. Scroll down. Here's level one. Here's level two. And then I just click on the next one. Now, remember, on the very left side, mind you, you're on level two. This is the second week. Do not, do not skip anything. Don't try to do your own thing. Work it exactly the way as it's shown. So let's say I was going to do mini squats. Let's say I was going to do, on day two, I was going to do a warm-up. Uh, let's say stretching again, respiratory muscle training. Say on day three, pulse tech, purse lip breathing, aerobic exercise. Let's say I was going to do aerobic exercise really quick. That's 30 minutes, by the way. Well, 27 minutes and 53 seconds in total. So I'd press play. Now, mind you, you can have two options here. You don't have to get any bites. You can do leg flutters if you wanted to. Leg flutters are where you're sitting down and you're lifting your legs up, simulating a bike. You can use a stationary bike or a hand and foot pedal if you, uh, if you have that. So you'll get the, to the introductory of it first. So I'll play it right here. Okay. You'll have music. Uh, if you have a stationary bike, then you focus on the right side. If you have a uh, hand and foot bike, then you use on the left side. And then there's a brake time. It adds brakes. It tells you when to put your pulse oximeter on, what to look for. Make sure you're waiting the 30 seconds. Uh, and you'll see me jump in once in a while. Like, you'll see me sh uh, show up uh, to make sure that, hey, let's do a talk test. Let's do this. Let's do that. So let it count down just so you can kind of see it. And you don't have to move as fast as they are. Just work at the pace. You have a five-minute break time to assess the following oxygen levels and pain levels. And you just follow along. I'm right on the right side. After a five-minute break, You'll have the countdown going back to the routine after your break. On break time, you can, you know, use the bathroom, whatever you want to do. So let's, it's going to be 30 count. Let me go down, speed so while, this thing up. So while we're uh, waiting for the countdown, uh, we have a question from Glenda. Sure. Uh, she was wondering if using the delta V while doing exercises like the bike or like a treadmill? Well, that you follow it according to the description. Okay. Always follow it. If it says add a respiratory muscle trainer, you do it exactly as it says. You don't try to add more things in because when we start out pulmonary rehab, we don't try to get somebody to be out of breath. We work very lightly. So you're trying to add other things. That's later on. You know, you're talking about maybe week three, you know, week four, week five, week six, week 13, week 15. You're talking about those are more, ad, you know, they're more higher advanced levels. So you always start with week one because they're going to be light and easy. You know, if somebody can't breathe very well, we don't want to get them on a bike or try to get them to walk first because that person probably can't breathe very well. So we always start very slow. So don't add anything else in because it will add in later on. It's working you up to an advanced level. Okay. Remember, we're the, we're the doctors and clinicians here, right? you got to follow the recommended use by the doctors and clinicians that run the program. Don't try to make up your own things by adding. And it's, there's nothing wrong with adding a Delta V to it. But, you know, for some people that might not be realistic yet. Because you're adding a lot of resistance to that person's breathing, and that person might get a little anxious because they haven't started up the program yet, and already you're adding a delta V to it, and it's going to cause that person to be harder on their work of breathing, which it, it, that's what it should be doing. So just follow it exactly how it shows, okay? And you just work out your levels, you know? You start with day one. Don't go to day two until the next day. I'll repeat that again. Do not move to day two 
or day three, day four, until you completed that day. So after you completed a day, don't start the next day on that same day. Okay, you have to give your body plenty of rest. You have to give your body plenty of time to recover. You're doing exercises that is life-changing. You're doing exercises that helps improve breathing. You had doing exercises that improves lung functions. So follow it the way we saw how it works perfectly, where the outcomes are fantastic. If you start adding other things in that we didn't add in to there, you might be shooting yourself in the foot. You know, let us be the clinicians here, right? So we want to follow it exactly the way it's supposed to be. There is a reason behind it. It, was or, it took years to orchestrate it to where we can make a program as successful as going into a traditional facility. No kidding. American Thoracic Society, especially in 2017, 2018, and 2019, did a study on virtual pulmonary rehab versus with the self-pace. Not talking about HRN. HRN is all the way up to 98.7% successful. It's the highest in the whole world, uh, literally. Mind you, lungs is very uh, successful. Uh, they studied virtual pulmonary rehab versus face-to-face, -face, like the, the traditional pulmonary rehabs, and they tested it multiple times in other hospitals and things like that, and they saw that they were the same in success rates. So what I'm trying to say is, Face-to-face -face going into a facility is not inferior. They're both the same outcomes. And whether you like it or not, that is a fact. Because it went through peer review multiple times, it is a fact. Whether you like it or not, that is a great thing to know. That I can do the virtual pony rehab and be just as, as successful as somebody going into a traditional facility. Okay? But you don't do your own thing. Work it exactly the way it's shown. Because if you just started and you try to go through one or two weeks, you're going to be sore. You're going to hate life. Because you're going to get sore around your midsection. This is giving you plenty of breaks, plenty of time to recover. Work it the way it's supposed to be worked. Plus and, also your general safety as well. Yeah, and you can work this out for the rest of the, uh, you know, for as long as you need to. Uh, you can do it for as long as you need to. Most people usually stay in permanently in my new lungs, but there are people that only use it for three months once they feel successful and they feel the, out, you know, the outcomes are great, the doctor uh, you know, is good to go with that, and uh, the, you know, they can, that person can enjoy their life. But there are a lot of people that stay in because we bring up new, new content all the time, so they might be missing out if they try to cancel out, you know, so we, we update it, you know, very often, but um, with the new website and the new, uh, uh, new things that we're doing, we're going to be updating every month with new videos. So look out for the new content. It's going to be fantastic, but do not go to the new content first, work it out exactly the way it's shown. It'll give you plenty of breaks. You don't have to be a marathon runner. You can be somebody who only walks, you know, can only stand up for like 30 seconds and sit back down. You can be somebody who sits in the chair and or that's, that's the best that person can do. This works out at any level, health level you have. Okay, it has been proven multiple times so we have to get past that and say, okay, let's do this. Um, but yeah, the equipment uh, necessary for the program uh, for the Mind You Lungs, basically you don't really need any equipment at first, but the recommended equipment, if you want to do respiratory muscle training, you need equipment. I'm sorry. You know, it's just like I need to go to a gym. I can purchase my own gym equipment or I can go straight to the gym. Sure. Um, but you need equipment to work out with. A Delta V is very inexpensive, probably the most inexpensive one, but the one that works the best. Uh, we say that because this is what we use to, rebuild, to rehabilitate our patients. Our outcomes are incredibly successful in HRN, you know, and of course, mind your lungs, but in HRN, we specifically suggest these because we can attach them to an incentive spirometer. You can know your flow rate. You can know and see your own improvements without having to guess. Any other device don't have that ability. This is the only device that has that ability. So... You need a resp uh, it's helpful to have a respiratory muscle trainer, a pulse oximeter, which most people usually have. 
you know, that have uh, a lung and heart disease usually. Um, so uh, delta V, a, uh, a pulse oximeter, and an incentive spirometer, and you just need some free weights. Anything that you might need, you can also purchase it from the store. So if I scroll up, let's say I get out of this here. Oops, I got to go back to level one here. I'm just scrolling out through. Oh, did you see this one? Uh, the best ways to take respiratory medication and treatments. These are actually really fantastic because uh, um, we submit them over to uh, my healthcare teams. And they did a test to see how successful these programs were. And the majority of the people, you should really see the, uh, that was the uh, sheets that I gave you, John. Uh, they looked at and they saw the improvements just off the people that were using that video. And it was so amazing to see the outcomes uh, from it. It was just really, really awesome to see that. Uh, by the way, uh, when I click on that, I just clicked on Dashboard. So equipment right here, I just click on the equipment, and I can order. That pulse Bluetooth pulse oximeter is, not, is the one that we use for Denali Health. We have the other pulse oximeters like this one, and of course it's nowhere close to $309. That pulse ox Bluetooth are very, very expensive because they're FDA approved, um, and also they're Bluetooth enabled. So this is the regular one, you know, if you don't have a pulse oximeter. Of course, you don't have to buy that one. You can go to Walmart or something like that. Um, but, yeah, you just need an incentive spirometer. That's the VPEP I was telling you about, the oscillation positive expiratory pressure device. We buy these at cost. We don't add more pricing to it. That's at cost. That's how much they cost. We don't make money off products. Um, a lot of, lot of salespeople uh, say, you should, and we're not out. That, should, that has to be changed. But, yeah, you can pretty much get any of these that you want uh, for, your, for the program. And, uh, yeah. All that product photography looks amazing. I wonder who took those pictures. I know. Who <laughs> took those pictures, John? <laughs> but, I, but, yeah, so uh, if you're on my new lungs, it's an uh, important to note. You'll come – you'll – be directed immediately to the HRN store. Yes. Uh, so that's uh, something important to know. So don't be don't be alarmed if you <laughs> if you click on equipment and it goes to yeah. uh, the HRN website. So if you join into my new lungs, uh, the first week, make sure you get the option. Make sure you have the option to see somebody like me, if not me. Okay. Because you want to make sure that you're doing the right thing. You want to if you have questions. People have questions. There's nothing wrong with that. We're a human, you know, so if you have questions, things like that, write them down. And when you schedule your first appointment with me on that first week, mind you, it is an option. You don't have to do that. I would actually take advantage of it because, first off, it's included with your program. And also, you can get advice from somebody like me. You can talk to me. You know, you can uh, ask me different questions on I'm trying to do sports. I'm trying to do this. Uh, my breathing is very horrible. I'm working this out. Is there any of the other, you know, I can go over things like that. It's not a problem. You know, you can talk to a Dr. Shaw, whatever the case may be, you know, but you got to take advantage of a program that actually works the best. And this program obviously works very, very well. It's, it's, uh, it's we've been running this program for some time. Uh, the new website was just launched last night. So this is all looking very nice and refreshed and, and pretty and everything. So it's, uh, like I said, very awesome, very fantastic. Any questions do we have? Uh, let me turn my mic on. Um, sorry about that. Probably couldn't hear me there for a second. Um, so that so that leads me into uh, my next question. Uh, sure. Which is, should I contact my doctor uh, before signing up for my new lungs? Uh, I thought we just mentioned that. 
So we covered it a little bit, how, how we'll immediately, um, how we can talk to either yourself or to Dr. Shaw. So that actually answers my question. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that, that, is, that is the only question that I had left. Uh, if anybody has any questions yeah, well, about, like, yeah. uh, about uh, My New Lungs, we have about five minutes left here. Um, so feel free to ask your questions in the comments section below. Uh, but you know, just overall, I think that yeah, mind your lungs. You don't need a referral. You don't need. Uh, you just need to do the program. This is uh, t we made mind your lungs because we found a lot of people like the self pace program, and we find a lot of people love the HRN program uh, the way it is. Uh, the self pace program. By the way, uh, most of all of our patients use mind your lungs. So, and y you've seen the videos. You've seen people doing excellent things. Uh, being able to do things they couldn't have done before. You know, uh, we had that Reggie video, that testimonial. He worked seven days a week. He worked out seven days a week. So when he was doing therapies Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, he was also doing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday with On My New Lungs and on his own leisurely things. So uh, the program works. You Rebecca know? says thank you, as always, for, for this. Of course, um, of course. But... I just want to reiterate. Uh, this might be it might be a question that somebody has. Yeah. Um, just um, let's see if the if you want to reiterate or if, if this changes. If somebody is well experienced and they continue with my new lungs uh, and they've completed all the courses, um, do they still want to go in order of things, or should they? If they completed it, then they just continue because every month there's new content. So um, if they completed it, then, yeah, they can redo anything they want. They can go back to a week prior that they want to focus on. I like to focus on things I can't do. Don't focus on what you can do. You're here to change. You're here to improve yourself. If you keep doing things you can do and you can't go upstairs, then how are you going to be able to go upstairs? Focus on what you can't do. If your problem is, is that, let's say, that you need more time with uh, respiratory muscle training because you want to increase your volumes and lung functions, or let's say your legs are weak, you know, let's say your muscles are weak on your legs or, or something, work the things out that you have a problem with that are giving you complications. For instance, your legs are weak, but maybe you have high anxiety. Work out the stress management. Keep doing it. Therapeutic. Does everyone understand what I mean by therapeutic? It, it can't be one time a day and that's it. Like, one, like let's say I do uh, respiratory muscle training once. It should be six times a day for it to be therapeutic. Not one time a day to be therapeutic. You know? And if I'm on the bike, I can use the Mind You Lungs uh, to work out on the bike. So I kind of have like a clinician on my, by my side helping, but... Mind you, you have, you have the autonomy to actually call us up and say, I would like to do another follow-up, or I have a question about things. There's, there's kind of hard to get lost in that. It's pretty difficult to get lost. So um, just work mind your lungs exactly the way it should be, but uh, it's kind of hard to get lost on that, especially with the new website. They made it very, very, very user-friendly, but there might be some people once in a while that might have, like, I forget how to do this or that, and, you know. Not a big deal. We're all human, okay? I am glad that you said that because that might be a question somebody has. Uh, Glenda, uh, Glenda uh, will answer your question then before we sign off. Uh, how many times a day uh, should I do the Delta V exercises in my new lungs? Uh, so, think there's a Glenda, question. remember, you, you're not doing it. I don't think there's a specific... You, you know, you, you, don't, you don't do it the way that you want to do it. You do it the way exactly how the program lays it out. So you'll be doing respiratory muscle training according to the videos. So if it comes up respiratory muscle training, then you do it. And then the next day, you're going to do respiratory muscle training again. And the next day, you'll do respiratory muscle training again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, until you increase your lung functions until you increase your volumes until you increase the ability to open up the lungs more to get more oxygen in so you, you don't do your own thing again you work it out exactly how it's shown day one level one day one move to day two day three day four day five after you complete that day so let's say i'm on day one okay and it's monday do i do day two on monday 
No, day two is on Tuesday. If you started your program on, let's say today, which is Thursday, then you work out day one. That day will consume about 45 minutes on total, about. Uh, some classes are only 30 minutes long, so for that whole day, that's how much it accumulates to. And the more therapy you do, the better. But let's say you did day one, and you want to, you know, you're, you're, you know, you want to try to go to day two because day one was so easy. It was meant to be easy. Day one was always supposed to be easy. Day two, as we go to day two, day three, all the way up, it gets more sophisticated, more taxing on you as it goes on. But by that time, you're in day, let's say, week seven, week eight, you should be a lot stronger than you were on day one, level one. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is just to clarify for Michelle. Um, she asked if you, um, if she's not sure if we mentioned this. Uh, but uh, hmm? wanted to ask it uh, if sure. we needed, uh, if it asked, if Mighty Lungs asks if you are in HRN or if it, if you need a code to get discounts, uh, if you were in HRN. Uh, I believe there's a, a, there's a specific portal down at the bottom of the new website. The correct? HR, Here's so right. you scroll down where it says a, for HRN only patients. I did mention it before, no big deal. But how do I get to dashboard? Do you remember how to do that? So I click on those three lines on the top left. Just scroll up. You see where it says go to dashboard? Click on that. Okay, you're at the dashboard. Okay, so let's say I do this here. That's viewing all. I want to go over to... I'm just going to sign out. Okay. You see what I'm doing? I'm scrolling down. I have to scroll down pretty far down. Now, you see for HRN only patients, that's what you would do. Sign up for HRN. That is specifically at the bottom, Yeah, uh, Michelle. So just keep going until you can't go any further, <laughs> essentially. Well, if I go that, down there, I'll be here. Well, so never it's, mind. <laughs> you just have to look at the banner that is grayish. It says sign up for HRN telerehabilitation. You're not signing up for That's you in HRN doing the tele-rehab, uh, and that's what it's meant for, is for the HRN patients. When I do that, if you're – oh, by the way, if anybody is not a patient, again, I'll, I'll repeat this. If you're not a patient of HRN, because this is for 90 days, if you're not a patient of HRN and you sign up for this, they'll automatically boot you out, and also you can't go back into it um, because it won't allow you to. You have to, you know – I, thirty-nine dollars ninety-nine cents is not a lot, especially if you know how much it costs to actually do these videos, how much it costs. So there has to be a fee to help pay for the program to continue. I wish it can be free, but there is, you know, people ask me why can't it be free? Is it because we have to keep the roof over our heads and we have to pay the clinicians for their time and the coaches for their time to do extra videos, you know, and plus to run a website. I'm not sure if anybody knows how much it costs per month to run a website. You're talking about not just having it all up, but to maintain it. It costs a lot, a lot, a lot of money. So we, we have to charge something. Right. And the charge on it is $39. It's not a lot. Especially okay. in, in relation to what you would be getting uh, inpatient. Well, uh, yeah, I because, I mean, control. going through, like, I went through uh, um, the bridge. Uh, it was the, the Bayview Bridge. One of the Bayview Bridge, and it charged, uh, it was like $16 going one way and going back, you know. And it was just, I mean, that, if $39 is, is the most cheapest you can possibly go. I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, doctors charge $700 just to see them for like five minutes. Right. It's it, like, you, you know, it's, it, this helps the program and you, it helps your fellow uh, people that want to get, improve themselves get a program that actually works. So I, I wish I could make it free, but we can't. It just, it, 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 we would be hemorrhaging because we used to make it for free, but we, we can't do that because it, was, uh, it, it costed a lot of money to keep it going and pay the clinicians. I'm sorry, but there's no way around it. Right. Okay. So Glenda and Michelle both say thank you. So it, You're very uh, welcome. Does anybody else have any uh, questions? Yeah, any questions, uh, anything like before, that? Before we go ahead and sign off, I mean, all, overall, I mean, I'm ready to sign up for my new ones. I know that much. 
Well, there's a lot of people that really need it. I mean, it's the program works and it works and it's been out. I'm just talking about it here and, you know, we kind of dissected it a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, the program works amazing. But you just got to work the program to see it. I mean, seeing, feeling, and, and looking at the improvement yourself is, is what makes it, you know, where you see, well, okay, wow, this, will, this actually works. Of course it does. We, we won't put a program up and how many people talk about it so amazingly. It, it's, it's a great program. But the only way to really find out is to sign up. Pamela says, thank you. Great information as always. No problem at so all, Pamela. So if uh, thank nobody you. else has everybody any else. questions, uh, Remember to like and subscribe and to uh, follow us at one of the links for our social media in the description uh, of this live stream. Especially so, that YouTube. Especially that YouTube. Yeah, especially that YouTube. Sign up for YouTube. Don't keep procrastinating. We need those subscribers because that helps us out. It's, it's also free. It's, yeah, it's also free. That subscribe free. button is free. To hit. Yes. So, and it's a great, great program and everything. And plus you get a lot of good updates. See you guys. Thank you all so much. And